del Padre, del Hijo, del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Dios te salve, María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. Amén. The game has gone international. We are in Guatemala City for the 2015 All Fantasy Game. Hello, LFL fans. Mitch Mortaza joining you alongside Bobby Huco. We are at Estadio Mateo Flores in Guatemala City. You like that? Very nice. We've been here all week. I've been working on that for the Open all week. And now we get to finally play some football. Amazing town, but I'll tell you what, what has me excited is the talent on the field tonight. We have two premier quarterbacks. From the east, we have Dakota Hughes. From the west, KK Matheny. Hughes is having a sensational career. Last year, she was Rookie of the Year. This year, Offensive Player of the Year. And tonight, she starts for the East. And what about the Western Conference? You've got the starter being KK Matheny, all five foot one of her. She's coming off her first ever Legends Cup championship. And tonight, she gets the starting nod for the Western Conference. Her leadership abilities are amazing. She took the Seattle Miss to her first ever franchise LFL Legends Cup championship. I can't wait to watch her play tonight. Now that's the offensive side of the ball. I know you don't like to talk defense, but let's talk about Adrian Purnell and Danica Brace. It wasn't that long ago, folks, where Adrian Purnell was the preeminent defensive player in this league. Now you can make the argument that that's shifted to Danica Brace. They're both great players, but in my eyes, Adrian Purnell is the number one strong safety of all time in the LFL. This is her fourth fantasy game tonight. Her talent and experience is top by none. Now, Danica Brace, though, going back to her, she did come off the most impressive single season performance in the history of the game. She was named League MVP and Defensive Player of the Year. Talk to me about Brace. She's a one woman wrecking crew. I've never seen all my years in the LFL. Offense has designed their scheme totally around one player, Danica Brace. She is a beast. She's going to be fun to watch also. It is the Eastern Conference versus the Western Conference in the 2015 all fantasy game guess what folks el partido comienza después back to the 2015 all fantasy game a beautiful 65 degree night in guatemala city as we go down to the field with liz gorman we're down on the field with the absolute leaders of the All-Stars, Adrian Purnell and Danica Brace. Now, Adrian, I've had the honor to play with you. I know how intense you are, especially with these All-Star games. What makes this game different than all your other All-Star games, having this be your fourth All-Star game? I mean, I can't even win. We haven't won yet. I'm trying to bring one home for the East Side because, you know, we need that. I'm tired of losing. I'm, trying, I'm ready to win. Well, we're excited to see you play in your intensity tonight. Thank you so much, Adrian. Danica, what a season you have had, okay? We are so excited to see you play. We know you are the heart and soul of this team. How special is it to be on this field with such talented ladies? This is absolutely phenomenal. I told the girls in the locker room, the best talent, the best games all season long in the entire LFL has been between the Western Conference girls. So now that they're on my side, we're about to come out and wreck some stuff. We're excited to see you play. Thank you so much, Danica. You heard the ladies, they're excited to play. Back to you guys for kickoff. Danica Bray, she did not even look at Adrian Purnell eye to eye. She is fired up like this is a championship game and this is an all-star game. This is gonna be fun to watch, Mitch. A look at the all-fantasy game trophy as this is the most amount of talent we have ever seen on one single field in the history of the LFL. And here's Danica Brace, a high end over kick Fielded by Christelle Harris all the way out to the 20-yard line. Check that. She'll get it out to about the 19. A good return by the Ferrari. And we'll get our very first look at Dakota Hughes, the second-year quarterback from the Atlanta Steam. And we sat down with her earlier. Dakota, despite the success you've had at such an early stage in your LFL career, do you expect any butterflies before the first half of the game tonight? I expect to always have butterflies no matter how many times I step on the field, but I'm really confident in how we've practiced the past couple days and, you know, with the, all the emotions that come, you know, being an all-star, playing at an international level, uh, you know, I'm just going to step out on the field and play football. Dakota Hughes is having an outstanding career. This year, she was the Offensive Player of the Year in the LFL. 
Hughes getting off to a great start. That was a seven-yard connection with Lauren Sigler. And there are her 2015 stats, Bobby. 17 scores against only two interceptions. The young Dakota Hughes. Phenomenal year, 49 out of 95. 17 touchdowns like you mentioned. That's incredible for second-year quarterback. A second and three now. That is a quick screen pass. That complete again to Ziegler for four yards, and that'll be enough for an Eastern Conference first down. Just a tunnel screen out there to Lauren Ziegler. Blocking out front of her. Lauren Ziegler had an incredible year this year. It took a little bit to develop the combination, her and Hughes together. Now they're probably the number one passing combination in the league. And they're young with a lot of years ahead of them in Atlanta. Dakota Hughes and Lauren Ziegler. That'll set up a first and 10 ball at the West 20. Fakes the handoff to Harris. That's another quick screen pass. Good open field tackle by Danica Brace. Another connection between Dakota Hughes and Lauren Ziegler. That one limited to three yards. That's the problem with a tunnel screen. When you catch it, when you have Danica Brace in the middle, you don't want to bring it into the middle linebacker. You want to catch it and bring it outside toward the numbers, or you're going to get killed like Ziegler did there. Ball down to the Western Conference 17-yard line. Dakota Hughes looking impressive in this offense early. A second and seven ball at the 17-yard line. That's a little option play. Hughes going to keep it, and that is Agam Chichindu from the Los Angeles Temptation coming up and just wrapping up Hughes. Chichindu is one of the meanest players in the LFL, and Hughes is not a running quarterback. I compare to Tom Brady. She's adequate. She gets some yardage, but she's not an option quarterback, and it showed right there. Hughes did manage two yards on that carry. Danica Brace barking out orders. She is definitely the leader of this defense. Coming off league MVP and defensive player of the year honors. What a year she had, Bobby. I cannot believe how she's treating this game. I was surprised before the game. A lot of people think the All-Star game have some fun. She's treating this like this is for all the marbles tonight. And that's who makes the open field tackle on Coco Montgomery. And they're going to talk about it a little bit. That's what's fun about the LFL All-Fantasy game. It is unlike any other All-Star game. They are taking it seriously. Danica Brace is not treating Coco Montgomery like an All-Star. She's treating her like a piece of trash, throwing her on the sidelines in an All-Star game. I love this. That was a one-yard gain, now setting up a very vital fourth and four for the Eastern Conference. And they're going to want to talk it over as the East does call a timeout. With a little over seven minutes remaining, we have a scoreless first quarter as the stars are shining in Guatemala City. Back to Guatemala City for the 2015 All-Fantasy game as the Eastern Conference will be on offense and now we will meet their starters. Oh, Joe, you're center. I'm in love with the Coco. You're Italian stallion and tight end. Zigatron, receiver. Dr. Alberts, receiver. Ferrari Harris, the running back. Dakota Hughes, quarterback. Watch out for that high-powered passing game with Dakota Hughes throwing the premier receivers, Lauren Ziegler and Allie Alberts. I like the matchup of Christel Harris and Dakota Hughes in the backfield. It's going to be interesting because Christel Harris is arguably the best running back ever in this league, but you have a high-powered passing game. What are they going to do, pass or run? And Allie Alberts way off sides. You can see the Western Conference defense celebrating. And we've got our first ever bilingual head referee, Eddie Merez. Ellie Alberts way off sides. That's going to happen at All-Star games. They've only had a week to practice together like that, and the Este was definitely off sides there. The Este was off sides. I'm going to have to look that one up. It is a fourth and nine. Dakota Hughes under center, fakes the screen, looking down the field. Nobody there. That looked a little misdirection, setting something up in the flat. But nobody there under heavy pressure by Stevie Schnorr. Coach Michelson told me they're going to bring the heat. They brought a casino blitz right here. Everybody coming after Dakota Hughes. She had a receiver open deep, but there was no time to get the ball off. So the Western Conference defense holds. And we will get our first look at KK Matheny 
All five foot one, an absolutely career season up in Seattle. And look at the numbers, Bobby. 18 touchdowns against only two interceptions. Great numbers there. More importantly, her leadership there was phenomenal. She led a team. She came out there her first year in Seattle and took them to the championship. Absolutely. I think that's not a stat line, but her leadership was second to none. And we got a little trickery by the West. That's Michelle Angel. And she finds Bryn Renda streaking down the sideline. The 5'10 wide receiver getting behind the defense. Wow, that was string music for the West. Their first offensive play, a little chicanery by Coach Michelson, a double pass. You have Michelle Angel, the Los Angeles quarterback, a wide receiver. She catches it and fires a strike to Rend as she's coming to her own as a quarterback. What a call by Michelson. And did you see the arm on Michelle Angel? No wonder they're not missing Ashley Salerno in Los Angeles. Much talked about Salerno switch over to Michelle Angel. Michelle Angel has come into her own this year. She'll see a lot of action at quarterback tonight, but what a throw by Angel. Now Angel remains a quarterback, mishandles the snap. That was on the extra point attempt. The score will remain six to nothing Western Conference. Michelle Angel not accustomed to getting the snap from Megan Hansen. Western Conference defense coming back out. Let's meet the starters. Kim Chase, defensive end. Katie Whalen, defensive end. Danica Brace, middle linebacker. Adam Tachindu, lockdown corner. Katie Finlay, your starting corner. Ty Emery, strong safety. Michelle Angel, safety. There's some rookies in that lineup. Kim Chase and Katie Finling, Ty Emery. You got to watch how they play. This is their first All-Star game against a solid Eastern team. Dakota Hughes not wasting any time. Looking for her favorite target tonight, Lauren Ziegler. That was great coverage by Ty Emery and Danica Brace over the top. Mitch, you call it great coverage. I call it a blatant hole. Look at this. She can almost tackle her. Where's the flag on that one? I had a bit of sympathy for Ty Emery being a former cornerback myself, but that was an absolute mugging. Ty Emery keeps that up. She'll end up in a Guatemalan jail. These officials, they're not normal LFL official, and it showed right there. Coach Hack cannot like that call. A second and 10 now. Dakota Hughes remains in the shotgun. Ali Alberts in motion. Heavy pressure by Agam Chichindu looking down the field. And Dakota Hughes connecting with Christelle Harris. The much talked about Christelle Harris on the ground. She's also a great weapon down the field. What a read by Dakota Hughes. They came with, you mentioned a Cobra Blitz off the edge. Hughes read it and found Christel Harris on a post pattern, getting behind the coverage. Watch the strike by Hughes right on the money. What a catch by Harris. And the East scores, wow. Not enough accolades could be given to number 18. Dakota Hughes hitting Christel Harris in stride. And that'll tie our ball game at six to six. The Eastern Conference now lining up for the one-point conversion. Christelle Harris in the backfield. Pitch right, she fumbles the ball. Dakota Hughes covering again. That goes back to the mishaps of not having a lot of work together. Exactly, look, Christelle Harris, she should have gone wider. Hughes turned around expecting a, a solid pitch to get outside. Harris cut it up and obviously it didn't work. But Christelle Harris, let's get back to that catch. She is known as the top running back Two years ago, she was also the top receiver in the league. A huge weapon, Christelle Harris, as we meet the starters for the West. Megan Hansen, center. D. Harb, your starting tight end. Danica Brakes, tight end. Michelle Angel, wide receiver. Bryn Renda, wide receiver. Stevie Schnorr, running back. KK47 Matheny, your quarterback. It's going to be interesting to see if KK Matheny, the quarterback, after winning a championship, how she's going to play tonight. Will she be a little complacent, or will she come with an edge? And looking to her favorite target again, Bren Renda, and missing to the outside. We had our own Liz Gorman sit down with KK Matheny. KK, being the veteran quarterback, do you think this is going to help you calm your nerves going to play in front of such a large crowd? 
Yeah, definitely. I think that uh, you know, being in this experience in Australia and being able to play in such a large crowd uh, will definitely prepare me for tonight. I actually welcome it. It's exciting for me. It brings energy to me and the team. So I'm excited. Go! Well, that show this year playing in Seattle, sold out crowds all the time. She's used to a crowd like this. I'm just interested, after she wins a championship, how fired up can she be to play in an All-Star game? Absolutely. We won't find that out just yet. That was Stevie Schnorr. KK! KK! Give, give, give! Schnorr gaining eight yards, and that is offensive coordinator Chris Michelson. Here's a quick dart to Bren Renda in the flat. Renda already targeted three times this evening. Two completions and a score. Great read by KK Matheny. That was an automatic read. Nobody was covering Brent Renda. She just takes a snap and fires it after and lets her run with the football. They've been playing together so many years now, back in Tampa and Jacksonville. She knows the routes that Brent Renda is going to run. That completion now will set up a first and 10. Ball at the 18 of the Eastern Conference. We're going to expect to see a bit of Stevie Schnorr here tonight as well. And a pair of great wideouts in Michelle Angel, and we've talked about Bren Renda. Now Matheny sending Angel in motion. That's a wide handoff to Danica Brace. Chantel Taylor all over it. Taylor and Yashi Rice having an incredible year. Let's meet the starters for the East. Quiet, right? You're the Incredible Yashi, defensive end. Nigerian Nightmare, your linebacker. Lauren Ziegler, corner. Althea, your corner. Adrian Purnell, your strong safety. Dr. Alberts, free safety. It's going to be interesting to see if KK Matheny could get the ball deep over Ali Alberts and Adrian Purnell. I don't think so. That's a great combination in the secondary. Now Matheny rolling right. Nobody there. And that is Neka Nawani chasing her down. That is a linebacker, Neka Nawani. She is the beast of the East chasing down KK Matheny. And KK Matheny can fly. Watch Nawani. Catches her from behind. KK Matheny is going to be laughing about this later. She didn't think anybody could catch her from behind. Real close to a potential horse collar. Nawani chasing down KK Matheny. That'll set up a third and nine now from the East 17 yard line. Matheny going back in the shotgun. Stevie Schnorr flanked her left. And this defense, I'm really excited to see that front three. And they're going to bring the pressure. That is a quick strike in the seam. It's too high! Yes, it is! I swear to God, she doesn't take a fucking responsibility for one fucking thing. <laughs> Head coach Chris Michael said, don't tell him this is an all-star game. He's absolutely right, though. She made the right read. It was a man-free coverage. Had man underneath. Nobody was on Danica Brace. She puts the ball in front of her. That's a touchdown for the West. That'll set up a fourth and nine now. Score tied six to six. We're seeing a bit of offense here. But I also like the athletic play on these defenses. We saw Neka Nawani chasing down KK Matheny. And of course, Danica Brace being her usual beast. Matheny back to toss it again, throwing it into tough coverage. Neka Nawani batting that ball away. You gotta wonder if KK put the same preparation in tonight like she did the championship game right there. You mentioned it, Mitch. She threw it right into coverage, went to the wrong receiver. Early on, KK Matheny just not on the same page. Oh, she tries to float everything. You can't miss that fucking throw. Look how fucking deep, look how deep Ali Alberts is. This quick slant's wide open. What the fuck is that? You step right in the middle, you would literally have all, hell. You, you run into the rusher. It's crazy. Don't ever do that again. You are making some fucking shitty decisions. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Honestly, why does Chris Michelson not have a reality show? <laughs> you would never know this is an all-star game. You would think this is the championship, the way Michael's talking to her. Nor would you know that we're still in the first quarter here. <laughs> a minute four remaining. That is a low snap back to Dakota Hughes. Let's see if Hughes has any success. And she's trying the right side. Again, looking for Lauren Ziegler. And I don't think I've ever seen Danica Brace cover so well. Not at all. It's a great read. When you have Danica Brace against Ziegler, one of the top receivers in the league, just put the ball up like that, give her a shot, 
Brace put her on the sideline. Even if she caught that, it would have been out of bounds. Great play by Danica Brace. But you got to like them in the open field. I'll take that matchup, Ziggler versus Brace, if I'm the Eastern Conference. you got to take that shot down the field. As we wind down the first quarter here, I'm not sure the East will get another play. Brace making an early impact in the 2015 All-Fantasy game. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. A game that has been heavily contested by both defenses. And we are tied up 6-6. Six to six. to a special all-fantasy game edition of LFL Football Night. Mitch Mortaza with Bobby Huco and special guest sideline reporter Liz Gorman. How about that, Bobby? I love seeing Liz here, one of the greatest players ever to play in the LFL. And there is Christelle Harris gaining seven yards on the handoff. We have not seen much in the way of a run game thus far from either squad. It's interesting. Coach Keith Hack, known for his running game, I think he's like a kid in a candy store with having Dakota Hughes, who's a pure passer. He might continue to pass all night. That is one luxury. Obviously, Coach Hack, as you mentioned, has not had. Heather Furr has struggled mightily in the passing game. And there's been talk in Chicago, obviously, that there may be a move to Cindy Cummings coming over from the Vegas Sin. Very talented quarterback she hasn't signed. She's one of the top free agent quarterbacks out there. The problem is she wasn't in top shape last year. To play for Keith Hack, she has to be 100% ready to go. Now a third and three ball at the 24. Great open field tackle. Now a gang tackle, Agam Chichindu and Kim Chase, a pair of Los Angeles Temptation players. How fun is it to watch Agam Chichindu? She is so mean, I love watching her game. And we've got an injury, that is Christelle Harris. That would be a blow to the Eastern Conference. She came about a yard short, she seems to be okay now. Gesturing to her face, potentially got a smack right in the face. That'll set up a fourth and one now. You don't want to see this in an All-Star game. Option play right there, Chichindu didn't go for it. Punched her right in the face, just like Agam Chichindu was known to do, but it wasn't called by the referee. And it looked like she tore the face mask off of Christelle Harris's head. A key fourth and one when we get back, as we've got an injury timeout. I swear to God, if you motherfuckers don't burn that fucking bitch on the next fucking pass, I'm gonna kick somebody's ass on this fucking field. Dirty motherfucking bitch. Coach Keith Hack, no love loss for Agam Chichindu as we welcome you back to LFL football night. And now we go down to the field with Liz Gorman for an injury report. I'm down on the field and just got a report about Christelle Harris. She had a blow to her nose, but has recovered and going back in the game. The Guatemalan referees didn't see it. I don't know how they didn't see that. That was a blow like right straight out of Compton. That is Christelle Harris. That is a big four yard carry as it will move the sticks for the Eastern Conference. Stevie Schnorr tackling the Ferrari. That's like a scene out of the Avengers movie. Watch this hit, Mitch. She gets the ball straight up the gut. Great blocking at the point of attack. Watch Brace come in there. Two studs going at it. That looked like Brace laid the hit, but great playing off the block by Stevie Schnorr. And I love the way Schnorr has really developed since her LFL Canada days. Has really committed to the game. Makes the trips into Seattle to be able to play for the Seattle Mist. And it's translated now as she is a 2015 All-Star. That's Dakota Hughes faking the handoff, looking down the sideline, finding a receiver. And that is Ali Alberts. Alberts and Dakota Hughes going at each other all season with Chicago and Atlanta. Now on the same page in Guatemala City. Get me some popcorn, play action pass, pump fake, going up top to the lanky receiver, Allie Alberts, what a call by Keith Hack. You would never think this is Keith Hack calling these plays, unbelievable. As you said, he is a kid in a candy store. As we look at Alberts' numbers, we often talk about her defensive prowess, 
But as you can see, offensively, six scores on the year. She definitely likes to play on both sides of the ball. You're right, Mitch. She's a great two-way player for Chicago. She's doing it tonight again in the All-Star game. Now, I wonder if she likes to play offense or defense more. Well, the crazy part, as a defensive player in Chicago, she didn't get the ball as much. But with Dakota Hughes, she's definitely an offensive player tonight. Now the extra point attempt from the one-yard line. A little pitch out play, that going to Christel Harris. Great open field tackle. None other than Danica Brace. Not sure about that call, Mitch. Option play, Dakota Hughes is not an option quarterback. The defensive players know the ball's going to Christel Harris, and right there she gets smacked for a two-yard loss. So our score will remain 12 to 6 Eastern Conference. They're beating the blocks at the line of scrimmage. We're not executing those traps because they're beating us. He's right. That offense will not work unless they block for it. It's a simple game, Mitch. One-on-one -on -one blocking. If you don't do it, you're going to get crushed. The Western Conference offense taking over again. KK Matheny going back to work at the 15-yard line. Matheny having her troubles on offense tonight. We've got a full backfield. Michelle Angel and Stevie Schnorr. The fake to hand off to Angel goes to Schnorr. Schnorr a solid six-yard carry. The quarterback's dream is to have a running back like Stevie Schnorr. They did a cross-buck action right there. This is totally going to open up the passing game for KK Matheny. Again, the same formation. This time faking the handoff, dumping it off to Megan Hansen. That is your all-star center, and Hansen going for six yards. That'll be enough for a Western Conference first down. That play had a lot more potential than that. Great play action by K.K. Matheny. She gets it to Hansen, but no blocking out there. Watch the blocking. This play should have gone for a big gainer. She gets rid of the ball. The block out there wasn't there. And you got to like Chris Michelson's offense. They set up that play two plays ago. Absolutely. A lot of sophistication at play. That's another handoff to Schnorr. Schnorr getting to the outside for six yards. Tackled by Lauren Ziegler. Lauren Ziegler, people forget that she's a defensive player. In Orlando, where she started her career, I was coaching against her, and I thought she was the top safety in the game. Here it is years later, and she became one of the top wide receivers in the LFL. The Western Conference offense finally having some success. Looking into the flat in great coverage. That's Althea McNichol. The rookie corner from the Atlanta Steam coming up to lay the wood on Danica Brace. McNichol read this play out of the backfield. Brace was there. Watch McNichol break on the ball. Lucky that pass didn't get intercepted. Great play by McNichol. So the ball will remain at the 17-yard line. KK Matheny just not, either she doesn't have the receivers tonight or they're not catching the ball. Going back to our previous points, Coach Keith Hack, he lost the Legends Cup game to K.K. Matheny. He wants to win this game like it is the Legends Cup because he hates K.K. Matheny right now. She took the trophy from Hack. There is a lot of pressure on Matheny tonight, for sure, from that front line. This time a quick strike to Bren Renda. That'll set up a fourth and one. Short. Short. Oh, what the you go out and fucking slap my quarterback. <laughs> Well, that was... <laughs> measure? Can I get a measure? Coach Michelson wanting a measurement. Let's take a look to see how close Bren Renda got to that first down line. It looked like she's about a yard short. That is a good spot. Good spot. Bad pass by K.K. Matheny. Easy pass. Again, she's not on tonight. That should have been a first down easily for the West. And look at him. They go to the bull. That is Stevie Schnorr. Picking up a vital first down for the Western Conference. Yashi Rice talking it up a bit, but Stevie Schnorr is as solid as they get. Watch this. They actually get to Schnorr behind the line of scrimmage. She sheds off the tackler and easily gets the first down yardage. A first and goal now for the Western Conference as they trail this game 12-6. It has been a while since we played the All-Fantasy game, the last one in Mexico City in front of nearly 25,000 fans and another near 20,000 packing in the stadium at Estadio Mateo Flores for the 2015 All-Fantasy game. That is K.K. Matheny looking in the flat. Out there! Get your head out your ass! Oh, Play ball! 
And our coaches seem to be more fired up than the players That's tonight. Fine. That is Dane That's Robinson. Fine. That's fine. Hey, tight black laser. Tight black laser. Dane Robinson acting as the defensive coordinator of this all-star team. We haven't spoken much about Dane Robinson. He had an outstanding season this year with Atlanta. He was coach of the year in his rookie season. A very talented young coach. And you got to think, he's going to have another shot at the Legends Cup in Atlanta. Absolutely. With that quarterback, Dakota Hughes, they might be the favorites next year. A second and goal ball at the six-yard line. Matheny looking into the flat, that complete to Kim Chase. You did not see a lot to Kim Chase, but she'll go for five yards and set up a third and goal. That's the beauty of an all-star game. We know of Kim Chase as the all-fantasy defensive end, but here she gets to show her offensive skills. A little hot receiver coming off line, wide open, not a big gain, but it's great to see Kim Chase on the offensive side. The Western Conference with the, an opportunity to tie this game or take the lead. A third and goal from the five yard line awaits the Western Conference offense. The West coming out in the wishbone now with Stevie Schnorr, Bren Renda, and Michelle Angel. Now KK Matheny rolling right, looking to the back of the end zone and throwing short. That is Althea McNichol. And there was nothing but green grass ahead of her. Terrible throw by KK Matheny. She threw it out there like a rookie quarterback. Althea McNichol, she should have had that. She's showing she's got hands like feet. That should have been a touchdown for the East. Big time pressure that time by Chantel Taylor. Quedan dos minutos en la primera mitad. That'll officially bring us warning. to the two minute warning of the first half. Get off the field! God damn it! Stop making a good call! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Not back! Run it. We got a timeout, we got a timeout. Come here! Come here! Number one, get your head, your fucking ass, and you get Hey, and make the place! Listen to me! Listen to me! Stop playing and be coachable for a second. Wow, didn't expect to see that. That's one of his all-star corners going after Dane Robinson. Tempers flaring as we are at the two-minute mark. Follow your favorite LFL players and teams and receive breaking news stories. Like the LFL's official Twitter page, twitter.com slash myLFL. Back to the 2015 LFL All-Fantasy Game. And what an atmosphere here at Estadio Mateo Flores. The crowd has really gotten into it. I'm surprised it's my first time in Guatemala. What an amazing country. Najat Christmas for that greed in the crowd. They're loving this LFL football. I tell you what, we got a chance to go around and check out some of this country with the live volcanoes. We talked about it in the pregame show. The food is amazing. Just an incredible host this week. We've had a lot of fun this week. It's surprising that the women can focus on the game tonight. And that is a fourth and goal play. We've got a penalty. Not certain if that's on the Western Conference, potentially a false start. Comenzando antes de la jugada. Ofensivo, número 13. Cinco yardas de castigo. Cuarta oportunidad. False start on the offense. Number 13, five yard penalty, still fourth down. The call goes on Kim Chase. I'm not sure if he was reading a book or making a call. It was a great call. You can see Chase right here. She jumps, she moves, and they brought the ball back Cinco yards. That'll set up a fourth and goal now. I believe Cinco means 50. Five. All right. I'll give you that. Now a fourth and goal. I was about to say fourth and 50, but apparently it's fourth and five. Fourth and Cinco. Fourth and Cinco, balls at the 10 yard line, so it's actually fourth and Diaz. Diaz, it's fourth and Diaz. Diaz will agree to disagree. It's 10. Fourth, fourth and 10. <laughs> KK Matheny back in the shotgun, looking in the flat now. Nobody there. Rolling left under heavy duress, looking to the back of the end zone and nearly completing it to Bren Renda. That'll be incomplete as the Eastern Conference defense holds. KK Matheny doesn't look as quick as she did in the championship game. Usually with that reverse spin, she gets away from the defensive players. Tonight, they're all over. 
The Western defense will try to hold here as they trail this 12 to 6. And this defense will have to hold for the Western Conference. Danica Brace sitting down with us earlier. Who would be the one Eastern Conference player you would most love to see in an open field one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, definitely Dakota Hughes. You know, I'd love to get a big sack on her tonight or, you know, go head up and lay a big hit on her. Wow, that would not even be a contest. Dakota Hughes, the quarterback, one-on-one -on -one against Danica Brace. Hopefully that's not going to happen. Brace will get her shot now as the Eastern Conference will take over. That was a four-yard run by Christelle Harris, and quietly Harris is having a great first half. Going back to Brace, look at those numbers. League MVP and Defensive Player of the Year honors. 26 solo tackles, unbelievable. And she's had multiple knee operations. Incredible year by Danica Brace. Second and six now, pressure coming off the edge. Great coverage by none other than Danica Brace herself. Trying to get Ferrari deep again like that touchdown pass. Brace is not going to let that happen. And it's just amazing with those knees, she can still keep up with a Ferrari to secondary. Now we're seeing something interesting. We've got a player down. That's Danielle Harvey. That's not the interesting part. I hope she's okay. But Danica Brace is playing this game almost in the rover position versus middle linebacker. Is that potentially a better fit for her? Things that make you go, hmm. But now we've got Danielle Harvey, and we'll take an injury timeout. Back to Guatemala City for the 2015 All-Fantasy game. And that is a sight nobody wants to see in an All-Star game. Danielle Harvey down. We'll get an injury report on her a little later. For now, it's the Eastern Conference offense going back to work. Unlike the NFL, the LFL goes full tilt in All-Star games. Obviously, you don't want to see it, but it shows they're playing tough football tonight. I tell you what, Danielle Harvey is nothing but a class act, perhaps the most underrated Los Angeles temptation of all time. And that is Dakota Hughes faking the handoff, has a receiver, and Allie Alberts dropping the ball. There's Danica Brace giving her a little play-by-play. -play. Brace just does not know how to turn it off. You mentioned Brace on coverage. Watch this. It's like a Tampa 2. She's a middle linebacker. She's going deep in the center of the secondary and makes a whopping hell of a play on Allie Alberts. Wow, Danica Brace deep in the secondary. That is just a great nose for the football. You really have to hand it to Coach Sui Alnoa. He knows Brace's coverage is great in the secondary. He doesn't keep her up by the line of scrimmage. He brings her back deep in the secondary. A key fourth and six. Dakota Hughes looking down the field has Lauren Ziegler. And Ziegler gets it all the way down to the six yard line, beating Ty Emery in coverage. What a pass by Dakota Hughes. An equal, what a great catch by Lauren Ziegler. I love watching these two connect. And that's what I love about Dakota Hughes the most. Doesn't get lost in the moment of a big completion. Notices that she's in two-minute offense, gets the offense set, and spikes the ball. For a second-year player, watch this. She is cool as a cucumber out there. One-on-one -on -one coverage. She's got Ziegler, who nobody can cover one-on-one. -on -one. Gets her the ball. Great catch by Ziegler. She is so cool. I'm not even sure she's going to have to take a shower after this game. So after stopping the clock on that incomplete, it'll set up a second and goal. A little over 48 seconds. Now the Eastern Conference does have a timeout remaining. Score is 12 to 6, the East taking the lead. Hughes in the shotgun, quick strike. That to Lawrence Ziegler, big hit. And the hit coming from number eight. Ziegler not getting up. She's going to learn not to bring that quick pose into the middle, catch the ball and get back outside. You're running into a freight train in Danica Brace. That is D-Brace territory. Let's listen in. Oh, you could just feel that all the way up in the booth. Two great competitors right there. Lauren Ziegler going head-to-head -head with Danica Brace, and she took the brunt of that one. Give her credit. She held on to the ball. The clock does wind now. We are under 30 seconds in the first half. A third and goal ball at the one-yard line. And this is a territory with the East having a timeout. They can afford to run the ball here. Absolutely. They're going to give it to Harris. You know that. And there is Harris on cue and into the end zone. Christelle Harris having a lot of fun. That is her second score of the half. And there's a security guard getting his money's worth. That's a happy security guard. 
I'm not sure what he's going to tell his wife tonight, but that's a hell of a run by Harris. Now the East will try to go for two and extend their lead to 20 to six. I really thought the Western Conference would be more competitive in this first half. There's a lot of shocked people here tonight and in Las Vegas. The West was big favorites in this game. Four and a half timeout. point favorite coming into this West game. Team. As now we've got a timeout down on the field. Back after this. Back to first half action at Estadio Mateo Flores. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco and Liz Gorman. It has been a competitive game despite the score, with the East potentially going up now 20 to 6. Coach Hack and Coach Robinson have their team prepared to play tonight. It's showing right now. They look solid. Dakota Hughes remains in the shotgun. The East going for a two point conversion over the middle. That looked like miscommunication. Allie Alberts was not looking back, and Coco Montgomery was thrown behind. The point after is no good. So our score will remain 18 to 6, Eastern Conference in the lead. Hey, nothing deep. No, nothing deep. Coach Hack making sure they don't give up the deep ball here. Ren Renda known for her speed on the outside. Well, the whole first half, you can see the scheme put in by Coach Robinson. It's a deep to short coverage. They're not letting anybody go on top of the two safeties. Everything is underneath. A first and 10 play here. Matheny looking to the right, has Renda. And Renda tiptoeing her way inbounds. That will stop the clock with a little over four seconds remaining. They'll let them have that pass all night long because they're not going to score any points with that. You got to get the ball deep, but they're right there. It's a five-yard pass out of bounds, stops the clock, but they didn't advance the ball much. And for those wondering, there's no kicking game, so they've got to go for a touchdown here. With four and a half seconds, their timeout is somewhat irrelevant. Absolutely. Nothing against Michelle Angel. We know her as a quarterback now, but look at the two receivers. They can focus on Bryn Wren to double cover her because Michelle Angel, she's not accustomed to getting deep like a regular receiver. That's an excellent point. The West does not have a lot of speed as opposed to the East. In the East, you've got Allie Alberts and Lauren Ziegler. Michelle Angel can be a great wide receiver, but she's more of a quarterback. And on, on the defensive side, Dean Robinson knows that. So he's going to focus on Bryn Randall. Western Conference. That's her last timeout of the half. And that is the final timeout of the Western Conference. We talked about them having that final one. And now it's a matter, can KK Matheny have the arm to get it to the end zone? I'm not sure she has that. I mean, right now she hasn't shown it right there. They were doing the Nene, -nay, and it seems like they're doing the KK all night. That's the merengue. That's the merengue? Yeah, I was here all week. It's big down here. So this will set up the final play of the first half. You can see Michelle Angel and Bren Renda flank to the left of KK Matheny. And Stevie Schnorr, like you said, they just don't have the speed on the outside here. The trip set. I don't know if KK has the arm to get it to the end zone right. Even if she has no pressure, it's a long throw. Let's see if she can get it down there. Big time pressure. That is Neka Nawani. And that ball nowhere near the end zone. That'll bring us to the end of first half play. Here in Guatemala City, it has been a half absolutely dominated by the Eastern Conference, both offensively and defensively with big hits. And a lot of emotion. Back with halftime after this. Don't tell the Western Conference this game doesn't mean anything. They are frustrated down 18 to six at halftime as we bring you back Bobby Huco, Mitch Mortaza at Estadio Mateo Flores. 
Now, Bobby, did you expect the Eastern Conference offense to have this much success? Actually, I did. It's a who's who of talent on that squad. Led by Dakota Hughes, they racked up 125 yards of offense. I was surprised the Western Conference defense did not handle that offense at all. Again, though, noteworthy is a lot of rookies are playing. We have Ty Emery, Kim Chase, Katie Finley. They're all rookies playing their first fantasy game, so it's kind of expected. Yeah, and Keith Hack, talk about the offense he's put out on the floor. Wow, I can't believe it. Keith Hack, known as the running coach, give the ball to Ferrari all year long. He has a passing game going all over the gridiron tonight. It's fun to watch. Hopefully he does it in Chicago next year. And that offense translated to 18 first-half points. Let's look at some of the scoring. It started early, but it was the Western Conference on this end-around reverse. Michelle Angel, of all people, finding Bren Renda on a 31-yard touchdown strike. Then it was the Eastern Conference the rest of the way. Dakota Hughes going to work, finding Christelle Harris on this 35-yard touchdown pass. Then moments later, Allie Alberts on a 21-yard strike. And they ended the half the Eastern Conference did with the Ferrari coming out of the garage on this one-yard touchdown run. That brings us to a halftime score of 18 to six. Let's take a look at the first half stats. Stats were relatively even. Both teams had no ground game. The big difference was the Eastern offense. That 125 yards of offense led by the power arm of Dakota Hughes. That officially brings us to the end of halftime festivities here at Estadio Mateo Flores. As the teams return to the field, we get you ready. The second half kickoff is next. We are back to Guatemala City as we take a look at tonight's starting quarterbacks. Both quarterbacks both threw the ball 13 times, but you can see a big differential in yardage. Cody Hughes with almost three times the yardage that KK Matheny has. And Matheny with under 50% completion percentage. And Michelson not happy with that. Let's go down to Liz Gorman. Thanks, guys. I'm on the field here with Coach Chris Michelson. He's offensive coordinator. Coach, what's going on? There's six points in the first half. What do you plan to do differently the second half? Oh, we just got to finish in the red zone. I mean, we had three trips in the red zone. We didn't finish. So, you know, we just got to be more crisp. I think they're trying to get, um, you know, acclimated to the systems and each other. And, you know, it's a little late for that in the game. So we made some adjustments at halftime. We'll see what happens. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Back to you guys. I wouldn't be surprised at all if he went back to Stevie Schnorr. He did that during the regular season when KK Matheny wasn't on. She's obviously not on tonight. And you have a power back to get five, six yards of pop. That might bring the West back. Yeah, there's just no continuity in the passing game right now. I think you're right. Get the running game going, build off a little play action, and get some points on the board. That's Jenny Mack getting us underway. Speaking of Stevie Schnorr, she'll get it all the way out. Great field position for the West. Ball at the 24-yard line of the Eastern Conference. Wow, that's a nightmare for the kickoff team. The person you don't want to get the ball is Stevie Schnorr. She's like a locomotive. She picks up the football and goes North to south, right into the receiving team here. Wow, I like her running the football on kickoffs, Mitch. She is an absolute talent and a big load to get down, as you talked about. It is pure muscle coming at you. They've, in fact, nicknamed her the Bull last year. El Toro, how fitting. Toro the Bull. There you go, handoff to Toro. And she'll gain three yards on the carry. That is Lauren Ziegler on the tackle. And that seems to be the scheme for the Western Conference. Let's give the ball to Toro as Matheny is struggling mightily tonight. Well, the safeties are playing way deep. I think that's a great idea. It's going to bring the safeties up. You give it to Snore, they have to come up to make tackles. And there's the fake handoff. Matheny under heavy duress, dumping it off to Danica Brace. And Brace just running upright. She's going to get killed doing that. Wow, what a rush by the East. It looked like a Black Friday sale. It looked like KK Matheny was the big screen TV. That was a six yard run by Danica Brace. It'll set up a third and one. You could see the jailbreak. That's Chantel Taylor, Neka Nawani, and Agam Chichindu asking for the ball, but dumped off to Danica Brace. And Ziegler returning a little bit of that favor from the big hit in the first quarter. Great play by Ziegler. Actually, it was a great play by KK Matheny somehow getting the ball off. That'll set up a first and goal. We are under nine minutes here in the third quarter. Matheny under center. Quick handoff to Stevie Schnorr getting to the second layer of the defense. 
Schnorr will gain seven yards on the carry and set up a first and goal. I love this. Basic football. One-on-one -on -one blocking up front. Megan Hansen, she puts the linebacker either right or left, and then Schnorr reads off of that, gets big chunks of yardage, first down for the West. A first and goal for the Western Conference. And they are in business now, down 12 points in this one. Stevie Schnorr having a huge season, leading the league with 376 yards. That's an impressive average of 5.3. 5.3 is absolutely incredible. But look, they're driving the ball right down the field. First and goal, ball at the eight. That's a pitch left to Stevie Schnorr. Can't get to the outside. Great pursuit by that Atlanta defense, namely Lauren Ziegler and Althea McNichol. This shows what a great coach Chris Michelson is. He was coach of the year this year. He saw his passing game wasn't working in the first half. He made an adjustment. Now he's going all run, and they're in the red zone right now. Michelson doing a great job. Yeah, I think you got to get the ball out of KK Matheny's hands right now. Obviously, she's not into this game at this point. You got to build that confidence through the run game, and that is exactly what the Western Conference is doing. The East right now is on roller skates going backwards. Second and goal. We're approaching the seven-minute mark of the third quarter. Matheny back in the shotgun. That looked like Chantel Taylor might have jumped. High pass almost picked off. That could have been the second interception for number four. Althea McNichol. McNichol, again, had a great chance at an interception. But again, KK Matheny is not on target tonight. Wide open in the flat. Get the ball anywhere near, and she can go in the end zone. But incomplete pass. Do you think it's the altitude or the beer? Both. Both. <laughs> KK Matheny has been known to enjoy her gallos. That is the beer of choice here in Guatemala City. But yeah, she's just not on the same page with her receivers. They won, Again, they won the championship, and you know what? I'd probably do the same thing. Chris Michelson looks like he put a little extra pounds on during the offseason here. Win the championship, they deserve it. A little complacency in Seattle. I'm sure they'll love to hear that. Fourth and goal. Ball remains at the seven-yard line. A little bit of miscommunication between Matheny and Renda. Another heavy set pressure. That is Chantel Taylor having a whale of a ball game. And nobody open but finding Stevie Schnorr in the flat. Now a fourth and goal. No gain on that completion. Coach Michelson, right now, here we go again. They're making like this is a championship game now. They're arguing back and forth. But again, this is a complex system that Seattle has. These All-Stars don't know it. It showed right there. The defense was all over them. They bending right now, but they're not breaking, definitely. Fourth and goal, as I said. Ball remains at the seven-yard line. The West still trailing this one by 12 points. As Matheny remains a quarterback, if you're wondering, there's no second quarterback in this All-Star game. So Matheny and Dakota Hughes will go the distance in this game. This is the play of the game for KK Matheny. She needs to come up with something right now. We're approaching the five-minute mark. Matheny back in the shotgun. You can see the East setting up the blitz. Now dropping back, Chantel Taylor still getting through. That's Stevie Schnorr. And Schnorr trying to find her way to the goal line will not get there. That is the Eastern Conference with the big stop. KK Matheny, she saw a ghost in the pocket. There was a pocket. She should have stood there and found somebody open. And watch this. There's not a whole lot of pressure, but she moves out of the pocket, throws a bad pass. Schnorr makes a great catch, but gets swarmed. Again, not a great play by KK. If she'd looked up, Kim Chase was open in the back of the end zone. So as you can, I think all that pressure is starting to get to her head a bit. You're right. She's getting some serious heat tonight, but she had all kinds of time right there. A first and goal. Hughes now under pressure, throwing it down the field. That'll be intercepted. Agam Chachindu bringing it back to the house and getting down to the two-yard line. That is Dakota Hughes on the tackle. Just what the doctor ordered for the West. That's probably the worst pass I've ever seen Dakota Hughes. But you know what she did? As bad as the pass was, this is what good quarterbacks do. If you throw a bad pass to get picked off, you personally go over there and make the tackle. Watch this. This is the first tackle of her career. A good hit and stops a touchdown. That is a pretty impressive open field tackle for any quarterback. Wow, don't let Dane Robinson see that. She might be going both ways pretty soon. Now here's a little bit of a breaking news story. You've got Michelle Angel at quarterback. Obviously she filled in for Ashley Salerno in Los Angeles.
as a backup, and she's going to try to quarterback sneak this one in. It looked like she crossed the plane. We're going to get an official count here shortly. And she did. That is a score for the Western Conference. Or was it? No official word down on the field just yet. Yeah, no, that is a score. They're asking the Western sideline if they want to go for one or two. So Michelle Angel making a big impact. This and was not scheduled. Not at all. Not at all. Perhaps they just want to get a different look. And there's a look at KK Matheny standing right next to Chris Michelson. Maybe he's not happy. That's his quarterback, too. He just pulled his own quarterback. This will be the extra point attempt. Angel trying to get to the left side behind the blocking of Katie Whelan. She gets in. A little homage to LaDainian Tomlinson of the San Diego Chargers. So Michelle Angel brings the Western Conference to within five points of the East. Again, it shows you what a great coach Coach Michelson is. A lot of people will say, probably say they're going to leave KK in the whole game. But sometimes, just like a baseball game, when your quarterback's not hot, the pitcher's not hot, you make a change, Michelle Angel brings a spark to the game. Perhaps a little bit of momentum shift here. You can see the fire in the eyes of Danica Brace. They know they've got to get a stop here. That's Christelle Harris. And Brace coming over the top, but not before Harris picks up six yards. Just like that, one big play by Agam Chichindu, and it's a one-score ball game. A second and four now. There's the captain of that defense. Ty Emery also quietly had a great season from Australia. Playing for the Vegas Sin now. Interesting, that one play, they came out throwing, they looked for a big score, but now that bad pass put the West right back in the action. A second and four play, Dakota Hughes looking down the left side. That was intended for Ali Alberts. Great coverage, bump and run coverage by Agam Chichindu. They had man-to-man -man coverage. They had Agam Chichindu on an island out there. They were trying to catch her on a vacation. But great coverage on Allie Albert. She got the upper hand on that one. That is the big knock on Agam Chichindu, an absolute great tackler, but she can't cover. In the last couple plays, she's proven that she can cover. Allie Albert's one of the best there ever was at that position, and she was covered like a blanket. A third and four play now. As we are getting down to the three-minute mark of the third quarter in a game that's gone back and forth with the West showing some life here. Dakota Hughes looking over the middle has a wide open Coco Montgomery. That is an underutilized tight end in her third year in Atlanta. Sometimes in an all-star game like that, there's so many stars that players can overlook. Coco Montgomery had an unbelievable year with Atlanta. That's the first time she touched the football tonight on that pass over the middle. But she's a former track star. It's good to see her get the ball. That'll set up a first and 10 at the West 17-yard line. Coach Dane Robinson looking on very intensely. That's an inside handoff, Dina Fagiano. And how many times have we seen Coach Keith Hack's offense run that play? Dina Fagiano on the Y under. Chicago does this every game, and every time she gets over five yards of carry. Little misdirection right there, one-on-one -on -one in the secondary. Eight yards later, Dina Fagiano. Love that play. An eight-yard run by Fagiano now setting up a very manageable second and two. Dakota Hughes under center, going to run the option, keep it herself. I'm not sure what she was doing there. The option is not part of the offense at Atlanta. Dakota Hughes is definitely not an option quarterback. Listen, 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 no, strong right, strong right, fake 21, no, strong right, YMO, fake 21, by give. That's one of Keith Hack's classic calls right there. They fake the ball to Harris. They'll have the end come around getting the ball. I love this call. They will need two yards as this sets up a third and two. Ball at the nine yard line of the Western Conference. And this is a great answer drive for the East. After the West took momentum, they've taken it right back. And you called it, Bobby. That is Allie Alberts. That'll be enough for an Eastern Conference first down. Keith Hack learned in the championship game, he handed this ball off to Harris, and they got swarmed by Seattle. So he, off that play, they had the Ali Alberts end around. They got the first down. First and goal ball at the six of the West. And Dakota Hughes really settling into this offense now. 
this shows how cool she is. She had that bad pick to Agam Chichindu, and here she is right after that taking the East down for a score. A first and goal again, inside handoff fake. She's gonna go to the flat, an ill-advised pass. And somehow Lauren Ziegler caught that. Danica Brace was all over her. That shows the confidence that Hughes has in Ziegler. Brace all over, she still completes the pass. Let's go down to Liz for an injury report. After speaking to the LFL medical staff, we now know that Danielle Harvey has a torn ligament in her knee and will not be returning to the game. That is not good news at all. An all-star game, you hate to see it as a star player get an injury like that. That's a big injury, a torn ligament. Hopefully she can come back next year. Danielle Harvey is absolutely the heart and soul of that front line of Los Angeles. If she cannot return by opening night, that's going to be a big loss for them. Uh, you hate to see that. Second and goal. We are under 20 seconds remaining. Dakota Hughes under center. Looking over the middle, Dina Wachowski. And I'm not sure she caught that ball. Danica Brace, what a play. She goes for the fake, takes one step up, then adjusts, comes back. Looks like it's a touchdown. Somehow gets her hand in there to break it up. There's not enough accolades in the dictionary for Danica Brace. When I saw the fake, I thought it's an easy touchdown for the East. I thought there's no way Brace would get there, but she got there. A consummate leader and just an absolute nose for the football. She broke up that score in the end zone. Now setting up a third and goal handoff. Christelle Harris win in doubt. And that is Harris's fourth touchdown on the night. <laughs> this time jumping on the photographer. Wow, now I know where Antonio Brown got that move from. He, he got it from Chris Dell to Ferrari Harris. Wearing the same colors of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And this crowd loving every moment of LFL football down south. I know that Keith Hack, he likes to try different plays, but inside the red zone, why don't you just give it to the Ferrari every time? You can't stop her. And for those counting, that was a nine play, 35 yard drive, taking up a little over four minutes. A great answer to the Western Conference score. Another Y handoff, Dina Fagiano with ease. And that'll extend the Eastern Conference lead to 25 to 13. We might have to rename this play the Fagiano. She runs it better than anybody. She ran it all season long, and here it is in the All-Star game. Nobody can stop her. Now, Bobby, I realize this is an All-Star game, but how important is it for the Western Conference to answer here and keep this game respectable? Very. KK Matheny, she wants this game not having a great night, but you know how much Coach Michelson wants it. I wouldn't be surprised if they come right back right now. This is a high-powered offense with a lot of weapons. I think for KK Matheny, she just needs to get a bit of that swagger back. She'll face a first and 10 here, ball at the 15-yard line. Matheny back in the shotgun, looking to the right side, was looking in the flat and nearly intercepted. I am really impressed by that front line pressure of the Eastern Conference tonight. The crazy part about that play, she made a great read. KK Matheny saw the Cobra corner blitz. She made the right read, but she's only 5'2". That's the corner right there. If she gets that ball overhead, it could have been a touchdown for the West. It's tough to her, for her to find lanes at 5'2". Ziegler breaking up that pass, and here's Danica Brace saving a touchdown. The East leading at 25-13. For the final 10 minutes of play, the 2015 All-Fantasy Game, Mitch Mortaza, Bobby Huco, and special guest Liz Gorman, as the Western Conference now will go to work. Ball at the 15-yard line, and Matheny back in the shotgun. Looking over the middle, has a receiver. That is Bren Renda, and Renda will get five yards on that play. There's a lot of time left. They have to get the ball in Bryn Renda's hand. Again, though, Coach Robinson probably loves this because it's way underneath. They're not getting the ball over the safeties. All this is going to do is run some clock. 
Matheny's got to come up with some big plays right now to get back in his game. A third and five play now. Ball up to the 20-yard line inside handoff. Stevie Schnorr. And Schnorr trying to work the middle against Yashi Rice. Adrian Purnell and Rice on the tackle. Super play by Rice and Purnell. It's very rare where Schnorr gets held under five yards. That makes it fourth down right now. A critical fourth down here. A fourth and three to be exact. They have got to move the chains here, the Western Conference. Matheny under center. That is a quick bubble screen to Bren Renda. That'll be enough for a first down and they'll move the chains. Great play by Bren Renda, but she runs into her ex-teammate, Adrian Purnell, and I hope she's okay. That was a big hit. KK Matheny going over to check out her star wide receiver. And there's the high hit by Adrian Purnell. A lot of people don't know, yeah, they absolutely played together in Tampa, Jacksonville. It's crazy how the dynamics worked over the years with all these veterans going from city to city. Free agency, that's what it brought in. There's KK Matheny. She went clear across the country and won a championship in Seattle. It is truly amazing to see the lengths these athletes have gone through in literally uprooting their lives for the opportunity to play LFL football. They totally do it. It's crazy the way they will get up and move to a different city, move their whole life to a different city just to play LFL football. And there is Matheny looking sharp now, finding Stevie Schnorr. And Schnorr making cuts like Barry Sanders. I have never seen that from El Toro. I haven't either. Watch El Toro. KK throws the strike, gets her ball quick, and then watch his jump cut. Bam! Bam! Both of you guys get out of my way. I love this. What a play. That is great nimbleness by someone that you would not expect to have it. That is the beauty of an all-star game. Stevie Schnorr, she's used to pounding through people north-south, and she two, makes two jump cuts like that. That's great football. That Schnorr catch now sets up a first and 10, and the Western Conference is in business now at the 13-yard line. Still a lot of time remaining, two timeouts, with over 7.15 left in this game. From the shotgun, quick strike. That is Danica Brace up the seam and all the way down to the four yard line. That was almost like a shovel pass. It was like a jump pass. I don't know how she got the ball. It's a fake inside hand off to Schnorr. And then she shot puts it out there. Great catch by Schnorr. She almost takes it in the end zone. So great play by KK Matheny. I think the Seattle Miss players have just taken this game on their own shoulders and said, we're going to win it. Absolutely interesting right now. Michelle Angel in the game at quarterback. I'm not sure if I agree with this because KK Matheny seems to be turning a corner and now you're messing with that continuity a little bit. Unless it's just a game plan that Coach Michelson has where Michelle Angel comes in with some kind of play they put in for this game, but it did not work right there. I think she, she is coming in for the loss of one down every play. It's working. I don't understand the logic here. You've got KK Matheny who's finally making an impact on this game and you bring Michelle Angel in for what equates to, I don't know what that is. And it was not a Chris Michelson type play. It looked like a quarterback sneak. The East was all over. We'll have to ask Coach Michelson after the game what that's all about, because Matheny's back in the game. That is almost like a Tim Tebow package. That didn't work. And that's why he's an analyst at ESPN. Exactly. Now. It just does not work. Here's third and one play. Matheny back at quarterback. Agam Chichindu and Michelle Angel flank left. She looks to the left side. That is a low pass. That was intended for Danica Brace. Not even close. That's a fumble. I think Allie Alberts, watch this again. She's got the ball, makes a move to the goal line. Allie Alberts comes in there and punches the ball out. That should be a fumble. That should be East football. And that was a football move. Forget about what I said about it not being close. That was a completion and a football move. It should have been a fumble. And now we've got Adrian Purnell down on the field and looks to be maybe just a cramp as we go down to Liz Gorman. I'm here with the fans in Guatemala and they're having a party, having a great time, right guys? I'm here. I'm here with Angel right now. Angel, what do you think about this game? This is your first experience. Yeah, it's the first experience. It's LFL and it's amazing. It's an awesome game and it's a gorgeous woman. And yeah, it's awesome. awesome show. I'm also 
still here with Mary. Mary, what do you think? Do you think you would ever want to get on the field and go play if we had a team here? Definitely. I mean, this has been a very eye-opener experience, so I would really love to be on a team. But I need to practice, though. Well, let's get back to this. They are all having a great time and partying up. You guys love it here or what? Are you having fun? Yeah! Awesome! All right. Back to you guys. This is an amazing crowd. This should be a yearly event down here. They are loving it all week long. It's great to see the enthusiasm as the West face a fourth and one now, and they will not convert again. Why is Michelle Angel in the game when you have KK Matheny? It's definitely a goal line package that Coach Michelson put in for this game, but it's not working. Michelle Angel doesn't look comfortable. Right now, she's stumbling on her steps, and she just throws the ball up. There's nothing there. There's nobody open. And again, this package is not working. Hey. Put a nail in the coffin. We yeah. scored here. Some of their fucking Dakota, all fucking you, Dakota. Let's go. Hey, this is the run. This is the hey, run. this is it. Hey, block for your life here. Let okay. Chris Dale run to it. You gotta love the confidence of number 18. She has a ton of confidence right now with five minutes left in the game. It's gonna be interesting if they shut it down and try to run the clock out, or still let her throw the football. Well, we heard her in the, in the huddle say, let's put the nail in the coffin. So it'll be interesting to see what their approach is. That is Christelle Harris. And Harris racking up 14 yards. And regardless of what offense she plays in, number 13 is special. Her motor never stops. Deep in the fourth quarter, you give her the football, you're trying to run some clock off, and she still gets big chunks of yardage. They might keep doing this the rest of the game. And Danica Brace has got to be feeling sore tomorrow. She's been in on every defensive play for the Western Conference. Danica Brace is playing like Danica Brace always has. A first and 10 ball at the 18 now. Hughes back in the shotgun looking to the left side of the field, nearly picked off. Excellent coverage tonight by Agam Chichindu. Agam Chichindu is having a whale of an even tonight. One-on-one -on -one coverage again. She's all over the ball. Agam Chichindu came to play tonight. And are we going to see the Chichindu twerk? I hope so. She is an, uh, She's a beast. I love her on the corner. I was never convinced of her coverage skills. She's really showing me something tonight. Against Lauren Ziegler, arguably the best receiver in the league. Now a second and 10 play for Dakota Hughes. Remains in the shotgun, now looking to the right. Quick dump off. That was Stevie Schnorr in coverage. And you'll notice the clock continues to run. You will not see the clock stop until we hit the two minute mark. Great protection up front by the East. The coverage is there. But Dakota Hughes gets the ball, good pass, broken up again by Danica Brace. Excellent placement by Dakota Hughes, but even a better play by Stevie Schnorr. This is a big time stop right here, a third and 10 play. And the Western Conference seems to be bringing the pressure. Dakota Hughes, another bad snap by Dina Wajowski. That is a quick slant to Lauren Ziegler finding some real estate. And that is a 20-yard gain by Lauren Ziegler. They're starting to have some fun right now. Ziegler going to have some fun with the crowd here in Guatemala. Lauren Ziegler is such an athlete on both sides of the ball. And you can see the connection between her and Dakota Hughes in that chemistry building. Hughes delivered a strike, bad snap, put it right on the money to Hughes, and she makes a big play of it. First down again for the East. Just when the Western Conference had to have a stop, the Eastern Conference answers. I love the conviction of this offense. Absolutely. I love the game plan by Keith Hack. I would have not called this with his running back, the Ferrari in the backfield. It's been all Dakota Hughes tonight. Absolutely. Give credit to the offensive coordinator of the Eastern Conference. And there is one of his patent plays, Dina Fagiano on the Y handoff. Fagiano gaining six yards on the carry. Again, one of their favorite plays, Fagiano. She always comes through in the clutch. Here we are, two minutes left in the game, and finally looks like Danica Brace is getting a little tired. That will officially bring us to the two-minute mark in Guatemala City at the 2015 All-Fantasy Game. We are officially at the two-minute mark, but they don't seem to be stopping the clock here. There it is. There is the two-minute whistle, a bit of miscommunication. We are many miles away from home, so we anticipated a bit of that. We've got two minutes of football left as the West tries to make a rally. 
back to the 2015 All-Fantasy game in Guatemala City, and it has been quite the game for the Eastern Conference. And specifically one player, number 13, Christel the Ferrari Harris, just named game MVP. Solid game for the Ferrari. It could have been a number of players on these. They all played great. The Cody Hughes had a great game, but the Ferrari deserves it. And there she is having a little bit of fun with the crowd. And now headed to the marching band. There she is. There is absolutely nothing number 13 cannot do. What a night she's had. The Ferrari, this is a typical night for the Ferrari, Chris Dell Harris. Over five yards of carry, just like she does for Chicago Bliss. She deserves to be the MVP tonight. Now a second and four play. Complete to Lauren Ziegler. And Ziegler wow. having a little fun with Agam Chichindu. When was the last time you saw an all-star game when two players go after each other like that? Wow, I've never seen it. But Ziegler gets off the ball, gets a step on Agam, gets in the end zone, and then comes back and puts it in her face. Agam doesn't like it, punches her back. Wow! Agam Chichindu will not back down from anybody. And there you have it. There's the all-star atmosphere. They're having a little fun with the band, and there's mutual respect between Danica Brace and Neka Nawani. And what a great capper to this 2015 season to see these ladies come many miles from home and have this kind of fun. It's been a great night. I can tell you one person who's not happy is Coach Michaels, and he loves to win, and nobody expected them to be down 31 to 13 this deep in the fourth quarter. The East looking to pile on here, going for a two-point conversion. Ball at the three-yard line. That's Allie Alberts in motion. Quick slant again. And once again, it's Lauren Ziegler. We talked about Christelle Harris, but number 14 is having quite the night herself. Ziegler, great night, but watch Hughes. She moves secondaries with her eyes. She looks to the left, comes back underneath, gets the ball to Ziegler in a hurry, and she scores points. There's Adrian Purnell having fun. We haven't called her number a bunch tonight. Playing in her fourth All-Fantasy game. I'm sure a lot of fans are wondering if she'll be back in Atlanta next season. And now Michelle Angel at quarterback, and she's struggling as well. Cannot connect with Kim Chase. She's throwing off her back foot. She's getting serious heat, but that ball was way low. The one thing that would alarm me if I'm a Los Angeles Temptation fan, this has not been a great game for Michelle Angel. She totally is uncomfortable with Chris Michelson's system. And now dropping back, intercepted by Lauren Ziegler. And Ziegler will take it to the house. And on cue, Michelle Angel throws an interception. Dane Robinson's defense now simply balling. Michelle Angel, you can tell she is not comfortable. Look at the ease. They are having fun out there tonight. But look, she just throws this ball up. There's nothing there. She throws up a Hail Mary. Ziegler, as always, the ball hawk around the ball, and she takes it in the end zone. You could see Michelle Angel throwing off her back foot and just had no rhythm. This is a scenario where I think you want to keep Matheny in, but this game is out of hand at this point. We'll see if the West defense can hold them here. The score is 39 to 13. And this is getting ugly. Dakota Hughes over the middle. Overshoots her center, Dina Wojowski. Wojowski was there with a great fake. Hit her fingertips, but she couldn't bring it down. But you make a great point. Michelle Angel just doesn't look comfortable out there tonight. When she played in LA, when she took over for Salerno, she looked great tonight, not so much. That is head coach Tui Silinoa of the Los Angeles Temptation. It'll be an interesting season in the silver and black with no Salerno. Of course, Monique Gaxiola coming back for her seventh season. That is unbelievable. Seven seasons. The average NFL career is 3.2 years. Moe's coming back for number seven. Unbelievable. And there's an interesting story. Cynthia Schmidt, obviously the Vegas sin not returning, so it'll be interesting to see where she signs. That was a seven-yard pass and catch play from Michelle Angel. It has been a hard-hitting game this afternoon. Everybody playing both ways. 
and nobody going harder than number 14. You can see her taking a knee. She's starred on both sides of the ball. Let's take a look at her highlights tonight. She is simply a baller. Not scared to take that slant inside. She's been playing football all night. Another slant almost takes this in for six. If I was a fantasy football player, I would take her number one. On both sides of the football, she's 100% all the time. Lauren Ziegler, I love her playing. And you could have made an argument that this young lady, had Atlanta had a better season, she was a definite MVP candidate. As she is an asset on both sides of the ball, as we've said all night. This will be a second and three. There is Lauren Ziegler lining up. Michelle Angel remains at quarterback, looking down the field, going to take a shot to the left side. Almost had Agam Chichindu. There's a pair of Los Angeles Temptation teammates that'll surely hook up in 2016. That looked more like the Michelle Angel we know. She stepped back in the pocket, one-on-one -on -one coverage, threw the ball up. Chichindu almost got it. It'll be interesting to see how much they use Chichindu on the offensive side of the ball in Los Angeles this year. They've used her before. She's got the talent. It's just give, you got to get her to football. They used her a bit up in Canada as well when she played with LFL Canada and the Saskatoon Sirens. Definitely has the talent to line up. Stevie Schnorr now in the backfield. They're going to continue to throw the rock here. That is Kim Chase breaking through tackles. That's been a young lady that's been pretty active in the passing game. Kim Chase looking great on offense. She was a stud on defense. But Michelle Angel looking like Michelle Angel right now. She looks poised in the pocket, read the blitz, got the ball to her. We've got a timeout on the field. We'll be back after this. LFL football night in Guatemala City. As the Western Conference trying to save some face here, Michelle Angel at quarterback looking over the middle has Kim Chase. And Chase will gain about seven yards. That is Adrian Purnell on the tackle. A bit of hurry-up offense by the Western Conference. Michelle Angel, all she needed is some time back there to play quarterback. Not the package inside the 10, but regular quarterback play like this. Quick read, get the ball to Chase. Good play by Angel. Purnell down once again. Hopefully it's just another cramp. And to your point, yeah, she is taking what the defense will give her. As Purnell slams Kim Chase down to the ground, you got to like what you're seeing from Kim Chase tonight. Coach Sui Noah has got to love this. Kim Chase, all defense, all year, opening up on the offensive side here tonight at the All-Star game. He's got to love this. Under 50 seconds remaining, Adrian Purnell out of the game. Michelle Angel looking over the middle, now trying the right side, has a receiver. Just overshot Cynthia Schmidt. Smart play by Angel Schmidt doing a post pattern into double coverage. There was nothing there, so Angel just threw it out of the back of the end zone. The Eastern Conference working in some of the backups. I see Jenny Mack in there. Jamie Barwick getting some playing time. And it has been, as I said, I can't say this enough. This week, the host crew that we've had, Eventos Total, the city of Guatemala City, they have been so welcoming of this team in fact, the opening night, they shut down their main mall to welcome the girls with over 2,000 fans as the West finally gets back into the end zone. But it has been an incredible experience for these young ladies. Guatemala has been a great host, and football-wise, the women tonight, I have never seen a game with this much talent on one field. Talent and a lot of competitiveness. That's Yashi Rice throwing Megan Hansen's helmet. And Hansen finally getting into the end zone, a little center release play. Hansen part of that great front line of the Seattle Mist. You can see Althea McNichol throwing Hansen down, taking exception to it. It will not matter, folks. This one is in the books. The Eastern Conference wins it 39 to 19 in front of a packed house in Guatemala City. That is Ty Emery. Tell me these athletes don't soak up every moment of this. That is unbelievable. What a week here in Guatemala. What a game. The East played unbelievable football. You got to hand it to Coach Hack and Coach Robinson. Yeah, outside of the game itself, just look at that picture, guys. Coach Dane Robinson and Keith Hack. Who thought those two would be holding up the same trophy? That is part of the magic of the all-fantasy game. It bonds you no matter what you're doing. 
You're one sisterhood and one brotherhood. And I got a feeling they're going to be celebrating tonight in Antigua. Get the Cervezas ready. The Eastern Conference are your champions of the 2015 All-Fantasy Game. For Mitch Mortaza, my partner Bobby Huco, our special assignment sideline reporter Liz Gorman, producer Connor Schofield, a special LFL football night edition of the All-Fantasy Game. We will see you in 2016.